Here we are again with the money, campaign financing. Really wish this would just disappear from this curriculum, but it's not. So we're going to get it this time. You had it pretty good last time because you wrote really good FRQs on it, so don't lose that knowledge. I'm going to run through this really quick. Remember, interest groups, they can contribute to a campaign. If they want to contribute to a campaign, they have to establish a PAC or a political action committee. There are rules for interest groups and the money and the campaign contributions that they can give to a political candidate because you're trying to reduce quid pro quo or that idea that candidates are bought by interested money. The first piece of reform we have is FECA and its amendment which is FECRA. So FECA was uh, passed in the early 1970s. FECRA was the amendment to FECA. So they saw the law, they had FECA, the Federal Election Campaign Act, they wanted to make it better, so they added some stuff in um, later on in the 70s and passed the Federal Campaign Reform Act. Why do we need it? Watergate scared the people. Watergate and Vietnam made people believe that politicians would do anything for campaign contributions and campaign contribution secrets. What did these two laws do? The big picture, the big thing these two laws did was disclose, disclose, disclose. Make the system more transparent. PACs had to say who they were giving money to. Candidates had to say how they were spending money, and the Federal Election Commission monitors all, that um, all of that election activity. It read you, if you were a PAC, you had to register. It limited contributions. It established public funds that could be used by a presidential candidate. Now, it's important to remember there are more PACs today than ever before and they're growing most rapidly in the economic or business sector. Businesses have the most to gain or the most to lose with government regulation and government tax policy. Too much regulation undermines profits, too much taxes undermines profits. So businesses, the business packs are growing substantially. Um, let's see, so the big loophole around FECA and FECRA were, is soft money. If you are limited to what you can donate to a candidate, then why not give an unlimited amount of money to that candidate's party? So soft money is the limitless amounts of money to the party for them to use at their discretion. And the party's discretion generally is to the candidate that you support. 30 years we go on with the loophole of soft money. We get BACRA, or the Bipartisan Campaign Reform Act, also known as McCain-Feingold. Why do we need it? Uncheck soft money. What did it do? It bans unlimited contributions to the party, or soft money. You can give money to the party if the party is going to spend it on voter mobilization efforts, because that idea preserves democracy. If the party uses the money to get people out to vote, then that's good. Okay, but you can't give lim unlimited amounts of money to the party to use for candidates. And it also bans issue advocacy ads before the election. The loophole, the establishment of 527s, which use independent expenditures to run limitless numbers of ads independent of a candidate's campaign. The fight. The fight deals with Supreme Court cases like McDo uh, McDonald versus the FEC. Did I just say McDonald? It, McConnell. Mitch McConnell versus the FEC. McConnell argues Mitch McConnell who currently serves as the minority leader, he's a Republican, in the Senate. 
McConnell argued that the ban on soft money is unconstitutional because it limits speech. So the question in McConnell versus the FEC is limited limiting money the same as limiting free speech? Is limiting soft money the same as limiting somebody's speech? Okay, and of course in that case the Supreme Court said you can do that. Today, some questions have been raised if we, if we should up the limits that a PAC or an individual can give in order to adjust for inflation. And we have, but not greatly. So in here, you have um, this right here is a political cartoon, of course, that depicts um, a mega corporation with a huge set of speakers behind it. And its voice is much louder than the people. And these people happen to be union workers. Okay? And the corporation is saying the freedom of speech that we all enjoy is the great equalizer, wouldn't you say? So you could hear his voice much louder than the people's voice. 